Jamie wrote in with an interesting question about music licensing in theater. Hi, I'm Gordon Firemark, and this is Asked and Answered, where I take your entertainment law questions so you can get your career in business and entertainment moving to the next level. So here's Jamie's question. I'm researching the licensing needed for rehearsals as well as recording live performances for a children's musical theater group set up as an LLC and charging monthly fees. We hold weekly class rehearsals in one space and then move to the theater for paid performances eight months later. Are blanket licenses needed for both of these spaces? Would that cover pre-show and post-show music as well? We often play and dance to other CDs, presumably covered in an education setting, but not associated with the show. Jamie goes on to mention that she understands about grand rights and how show royalties are separate, and she's addressing these things also. So I will address the other aspects here. If you need more information about grand rights, though, I'm going to post a link in the notes below for a video about that. So this is a question that has both a legal and a practical component, and I'm going to address both of those for you. You have to check with the performing rights societies, ASCAP, BMI, and CSAC, but my take on things is that rehearsals may not actually require a license if they're closed to the public, simply because they're not public performances. You see, copyright protection talks about the right of the owner to control and, and the exclusive right of the owner to control the use of the material for public performances. It doesn't say anything about private use, and I think that if the doors are closed and it's just limited to a small group of people who are rehearsing for a later public performance, I think that's not considered a public performance. But these licensors may feel very differently about it, and frankly, the cost of a fight with them is far going to exceed the cost of the licenses. So it might be worth just paying for a rehearsal studio license. Now, most dance studios and school facilities already have some kinds of licenses in, places, in place, so that's worth investigating before you go paying additionally. Now, for the performances, you definitely do need licenses, but they may not be the so-called blanket licenses you're thinking of. Some of the available kinds of licenses require logging of songs and paying per, per performance fees or flat fees for the run and those kinds of things. You're going to want to check in with all the societies and, and figure out which kind of license applies for your particular circumstances. And yes, those should cover pre-show, intermission, and post-show music as well. Now, licenses for recording the performances are a different thing entirely. You'd have to obtain what's called a mechanical license from each uh, publishing company that owns any portion of any song. That's lots of legwork, and they'll want to get paid based on your sales or something like that. Now, fortunately, most of the major music publishers have an arrangement for the issuance of these mechanical licenses by a clearinghouse outfit called the Harry Fox Agency. Go online, look for Harry Fox Agency, and find out more about that. Now, for video recording, we have still another quagmire. It involves similar challenges where you have to get permission from each and every publisher, but they don't have central uh, one-stop shopping, and they don't have to give approval. They, uh, they can give it or withhold it in their discretion. And most of the time, those publishers actually have to go get approval from the individual songwriters, because when you're doing video, what you're doing is called synchronizing the audio uh, recording with, or the music, I should say, with some other uh, content. And that synchronization license typically requires approval from the authors. And there's yet another component. When you synchronize pre-existing music recordings with video or whatever, you also are using a second copyrighted work, that of the recording itself. Now, there's no public performance right for sound recordings, at least not yet, but there is a, uh, a limitation on your ability to make duplicates or, or derivative works and synchronize. So you need what's also called a master use license, and that you get from the record labels. Same deal. You have to get each record label to say yes, and they don't have to give approval. So the practical aspect of all this, I would recommend focusing on your core mission, giving these kids the valuable experience of performing and learning how to rehearse and work together and put on a show. Get the performance licenses you need, but as for recordings, steer clear. I wouldn't record the performances, and I wouldn't allow others to do so. Now, this will be unpopular with parents, but it is the legal high ground. If a parent chooses to surreptitiously record, well, so be it. We all know that happens every day. But at least you and your school will have done the right thing. If you have a question about entertainment or media law, please submit it to me. Visit firemark.com questions.